Hey, hey, hey. All right, we made it to part four. So if you'll go ahead and grab out your notes that say cell structure part four, make sure you're using a highlighter and writing down lots of additional notes. Okay, so this set of notes is really um, about the extracellular cell. So the, the pieces of the cell that are just outside the cell. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the cytoskeleton. And there's your cytoskeleton. Um, and this is just like your skeleton. It's going to uh, support and protect the cell. So we never really see this in a cell drawn, but it will be like all through the cell, holding the structure and shape and protection, uh, much like your skeleton does you. Uh, it also helps to keep the organelles organized, so it kind of keeps them in place. Uh, it can also help with moving, so uh, the cytoskeleton could be on the outside like such for movement. And then it has various size proteins. So these next three things, the microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments are, are just the different sizes of protein filaments and so basically think of these as proteins in the shape of uh, a pipe or a tube and um, they're, they're what make up the cytoskeleton so there's three different kinds the first one we're going to discuss is microtubules and this one is the biggest it's a tube like think about it like uh, a straw so out beside microtubule do me a favor and write the word straw so protein, it's large, it's hollow like a straw. It's composed of, underline the word, tubulin proteins. And its main structure, or its main function, is support or movement. So circle for me, support or movement. And um, it also functions as guide supports for organelles. And so uh, some examples I want you to know are centrioles or centrosomes and that's an important one put a star right there by that little eye that's what you can see right here when we talk later about mitosis and you probably remember some mitosis but the centrioles which i've drawn there they're made out of microtubules and they make spindle fibers which are made out of microtubules and they move chromosomes so those purple things are chromosomes. Okay, so let's do me a favor and out beside this on your notes, draw this out. So this is a cell going through cell division, right, like a cell dividing. These are centrioles. made out of microtubules, so write microtubules. These are spindle fibers, also made out of microtubules. So um, that's the, the next two bullets, the I and then the II, spindle fibers. And they're going to move the, and we already said, the chromosomes, that's the purple Xs. Okay, cilia and flagella, you'll see here, uh, flagella is what's on the sperm. And that's what allows the sperm to swim. And cilia is little carpet-like things that allow um, movement. And so here's a picture of flagella. Now, sperm only has one, but uh, some organisms, like some, certain protists, might have multiple flagella. And then cilia are shorter, but both of those are used for movement. So the little organism can move like a spider's legs, but there's a bunch of them. So that's cilia and flagella. So microtubules is the most important one. You want to know centrioles, spindle fibers, cilia, and flagella. They're all uh, microtubules. And they're used in different ways for movement, and you can see that in this picture. Uh, this picture right here is a muscle cell. That's a muscle cell, and it's got um, microfilaments in it. So we're moving on to microfilaments, the second one. Um, these are the smallest ones. So I want you to think about this one as a toothpick. 
So right out beside microfilaments toothpick. And they have um, actin and myosin on that second dash. These are solid, so they're not hollow like straws. Like toothpicks are solid. Out beside actin and myosin, right muscle. Muscle flex. So actin and myosin, look at the picture. Actin and myosin, that's for muscle flexion. And they provide that pulling force. Okay, the intermediate, I know they're not in the right order. It should have been like largest to smallest or smallest to largest. But um, So microtubule was largest. Microfilament is smallest. Well, intermediate, well, duh, that's in the middle, right? Here's your actin and myosin again. You can remember actin is the thin one, thin, and myosin is the thick one. Those are the um, protein filaments that make up muscles. There it is under a microscope. Okay, the last one, uh, the intermediate filaments, they're the medium ones. These are permanent. They are composed of keratin proteins, and they help reinforce and brace the large microtubules. So they just help with the microtubules. And I want you to think of this one as like a chopstick. So right out beside it, chopstick. So you got the biggest one, which is hollow, microtubules, which is like a straw. The middle one, the intermediate, which is like a chopstick. It's not hollow, but it's not as big as a straw. And then the microfilament would be more like a toothpick. Okay. We said all cells have a cell membrane. Write that in. All cells have a cell membrane. Some cells... Some cells have a cell wall. So I'm writing this down. You write it down too. And that cell wall is on the outside of the cell membrane. So it's a protective layer. So if you think about it, I'm going to draw some more pictures. If that red is the cell membrane, then this purple is the cell wall. So all cells have that red part. Some cells have an extra thick purple part on the outside. And this is really for protection. So it says structure for protection and durability basically makes it um, thick on the outside. And there's three parts to the cell wall. The primary cell wall, which is made out of cellulose, which is just a carbohydrate found in plant cells. The middle lamella, which is made out of pectin sugar, so it's all about sugar. Uh, the pectin acts as a super glue between the cells to hold them firmly together. And look at, you can see the different layers in the picture. And then the secondary cell wall, which is uh, composed of ligand, which is a sugar. So cellulose is really the one you want to know. Circle the word cellulose, the primary. But uh, the secondary has ligand in it. And that's inside the primary cell wall, allowing it to reinforce the primary wall. So thickest on the corner. So look at the picture and you can see that there. But you want to know the cell wall is for protection. Okay, extra outside, like ET, right? You know what extra means. So outside the cell. So right above the prefix extra, write the word outside. Like E.T. was extraterrestrial, he lived, maybe I'm telling my age, I don't know if y'all know who E.T. is, but um, he lived outside, he was like a, a Martian or something, I can't remember. So this is just the protective skeleton outside the cell. So if that's the cell, the purple, oh wait, let me try that again. That's the cell membrane, so that's the whole cell. The extracellular matrix is going to be outside the cell. And it's just for protection, helps it all stick together. Uh, it functions in communication, allowing cells to stick together and communicate with one another. And it's composed mainly of glycoproteins and glycolipids. Well, 
If glyco means sugar, glycoprotein is a sugar protein. And glycolipid is a sugar lipid. You can remember that. And so if you look at this picture, right here is a sugar attached to a protein, and that's a glycoprotein. And if it was attached to a lipid, which I don't see any, if it was attached to the lipid right there, it would be a glycolipid. Okay, cellular junctions. Those are just going to be the, um, the gaps or the tissues, it says, um, that help the cells stick together. So these, where the cells stick together, this is what, it's kind of like Velcro. See how it's, it's sticking one side to the other of the cell? It helps the cell hold together. It like closes in the gaps. Uh, some of them are tunnels for cell communication. Okay, and then the cell is the, the sum or the added up of all its parts. It's the basic unit of life when all the parts are working together. So it's kind of like a car. It only works if you have all the pieces to the motor. Um... And that is emerg the word emergent properties. That's what that means. It all works together to be a whole. Characteristics of all living things are composed of cells. They respond and adapt to the environment. Um, they use energy. And they can grow and reproduce. All right. I hope that was helpful.